Welcome back to a brand new Creative Encounter podcast episode. I'm your host, Juet C. Payne, and you are back for episode 77 of this podcast. If this is your first time, welcome. I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell, do all of that notification stuff so you don't miss any future episodes. We're also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of the platforms. So go ahead and subscribe and check us out. But without further ado, I'm here with a brand new friend. We actually just met today (laughs) through some other mutual friends. And we'll kind of get into that in a moment. But this is my friend, Faith Von Atzikin. Yeah, Von Atzikin. Von Atzikin. There we go. Yes. (laughs) Almost got it. I tried my best. (laughs) Awesome. Faith, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited. So Faith has something amazing happening this weekend that you guys want to check out. That's why I have her here to kind of talk about it. Uh, but before we get into that, we got to talk about how we connected, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'm literally um, inviting, you guys know Sarah Baker. Uh, she was on an episode before. And also, too, because she just sat in a boat with Rebecca. Uh, but pretty much, I was talking to her about inviting her to my music video mm-hmm. this Saturday. And she said, oh, I don't think I can make it because I'm actually going to be performing in this dance thing. I was like, okay, cool. And she sent me the details Saturday and Sunday. Checked it. I was like, yo, this looks dope. This yeah. looks dope. I got to check this out. <laughs> and that's all Rebecca, too. I'm like, yo, the whole, yeah. and that's all Elijah. That's yes, all Elijah. I was like, the, the whole, whole fam yeah. is in there. <laughs> um, so I was like, yo, let me help to push this, you know, in yeah. these last few days before it drops. And uh, that's how we got connected. Yeah. 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 So, so what did so you think amazing. when I just messaged you? I know, like, yo, you got this thing, whatever. Yeah. Well, I had kind of seen on Sarah's story yeah. before and Rebecca's story yeah. just like your image with okay, them cool, cool, um, yeah, and yeah. so I was aware of who you were and I know uh, yeah. I've heard them mention so both like of you yeah person. not super not super random but yeah, yeah, yeah. I trust anyone my friends recommend yeah, yeah. so yeah. I love it. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. cool so you uh, told me that you dance uh, your dance instructor yes. too that's mm-hmm. so dope yeah. cool so you know, I love on, on the episodes, I love to kind of backtrack and hear stories of how people got into their craft and their yeah. creativity. So tell me how you just even got into it. You know, to yeah. Dance. yeah. Um, so I honestly started out as an athlete um, okay. when I was in middle school and high school. Yeah. And I did a little bit of dance when I was younger, mm-hmm. but I was definitely more of like math and science oh, athlete. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't really yeah. consider myself a creative. Yeah. Um, and then in high school, I just got reintroduced mm-hmm. to dance. Um, and honestly, had some really great Mm. dance teachers that uh, saw a lot of potential in Mm me um, and just kind of started pursuing dance when I was in high school. And then while just thinking and praying about what Mm. to do after high school, I really felt led to um, major in dance in Mm. college. And so I went to go get my BA in dance mm-hmm. performance wow. from Oral Roberts University, oh, yeah. um, which is where like the Lord kind of connected yeah. me with art and mm-hmm. faith more. Um, mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I launched. Uh, however, I graduated mm-hmm. during the pandemic in 2020. Okay. Well, how was that? Uh, it was kind of crazy. Yeah. It's kind of a huge part of why I'm able to do the piece now, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, graduated in 2020. Mm-hmm. So I took a few years off of dancing and then yeah. just felt that push to yeah. keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I started auditioning for some companies in go. Chicago yeah. and thankfully a door opened yeah. two years ago to move here and mm. dance full time in a company. Wow. Um, because, and then because your yeah. college was, uh, what state would that be? I was in Oklahoma. Oh, was yeah. Oklahoma. I was in okay. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow, yeah. Um, and then yeah, I got a pandemic job, moved yeah. to Pennsylvania for yeah. two years and then yeah, the Lord brought me to Chicago. Wow, there so you go. that's yeah. awesome. Cool. So you, so yeah. you got a fresh over here, like two, three years. Maybe? Yeah. Just two yeah. years. It'll be two years in August. Yeah. So how do you so. like, how do you like it so far? I really like Chicago. You really? Yeah. How do yeah. you like the weather? Um, I think like being, cause I'm originally from Southern California. Oh, so man, like no. <laughs> I wasn't used to, I think <laughs> yeah. I had my shock of like cold yeah. Midwest weather when going to school in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'm, I oh, already so, kind of so knew. Kinda preparing yes, you a little bit. Yeah, I already kind of <laughs> knew what to expect. Yeah, okay, good. The wind is still a lot. Yeah. Like the cold wind is still I a lot. Know, but <laughs> I've been here my whole life. I'm still like, Lord, I can't. Yeah, I still can't. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So you've been doing this for quite a while as far as dance mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah. But it sounds like um, in your high school years, you weren't necessarily tying it to your faith per se. Yeah. So how was. I would love to hear the, the, um, the mentality of doing dance prior to 
you you're kind of doing it for the Lord and knowing that your body is a temple for the Lord and you're a living sacrifice and the expression of all of it. How was it before that? And then what was the shift like once you kind of went to college? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say honestly, like the shift kind of started happening in high school a bit, Mm -hmm. um, which I'll like get into my testimony a little bit more once we talk about the piece, but I was coming out of just a very dark place, like Mm -hmm. freshman year Mm -hmm. of high school and uh, dance was honestly kind of my like step mm-hmm. into my faith a little bit mm-hmm. more. I felt like I had been struggling with a lot of things mm-hmm. and I felt like my dance leaders were also like great women of faith yeah. oh, and they wow. also, we, because I was at a Christian school as well. Oh, it was a Christian school. Uh, yeah, I was at a Christian school. Mm-hmm. We often incorporated dance as yeah. with our faith and, mm-hmm. um, but it was more so like, the things we don't do, like we don't dance to secular music right, yeah. or we don't wear certain things. Mm-hmm. And so it was less of like, how do I use dance as worship? Mm-hmm. And more so like, how do I be a Christian dancer? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like when I went to college mm-hmm. um, and had lessons about like, or whole courses mm-hmm. on dance for worship mm-hmm. and dance liturgy um, or liturgical dance mm-hmm. and um, just how dance historically has been tied to the mm-hmm. church mm-hmm. and that, importance and even the importance of the body yeah. um in art but also just in everyday life i feel like is when i genuinely stepped into this like yeah. knowing mm-hmm. of how to use my body mm-hmm. and how to create art that yeah. is inspired from the word and yeah. not just like christian mm-hmm. um and so yeah, yeah i felt like yeah. college specifically like sophomore junior year was when I started to transition or just mm-hmm. understand how to incorporate my faith and yeah. not just plaster like the Christian mm-hmm. title oh, on so my good. on yeah. my art. Yep. So yeah. yeah, I love that. That's so good. Um, and and obviously your name is Faith. <laughs> yeah. So it really just ties into who you are in your name, even because I, how you said more scriptural, more biblical based, more spiritual. Because the Holy Spirit distributes multiple gifts to different individuals. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just like a cookie cutter type thing. The Spirit knows that all of us are unique and all of us are different. So you can say, oh, Christian, you do these three things in dance or you do these three things in music. Mm -hmm. It's like each person's mind is individually unique and we come up with different ideas and concepts, you know. So someone, for example, I worship pastor at the church I'm at. So some people may stand there and, you know, raise their hands when they're worshiping. Some may clap more. Some may jump up and down. Everyone's Mm -hmm. doing it different. It has to be like, in this order, do this, you know. So I love that God gave you that revelation Mm-hmm. early on and you're applying that and, and even now teaching it mm-hmm. you know it's really cool yeah, yeah. so uh, when did yeah. you kind of get into uh the teaching phase was that kind of around the COVID time too or yeah. yeah i i mean the studio i went to actually required mm-hmm. high school students to be a teacher's aide oh, as like community service yeah. so i feel like honestly once i started dancing yeah. i also started a, mm-hmm. being an aide yeah. um and then you in high school it. yeah i enjoyed yeah. it a lot yeah. yeah in high school i started teaching a little bit more with like an after school mm-hmm. dance program um and then yeah in college i was teaching at a studio in the mm-hmm. evenings that's yeah. kind of how we made money as yeah, exactly. dancers <laughs> like uh, in the evenings uh yeah. and then yeah right now i yeah. teach with the company's mm-hmm. education program that mm-hmm. i'm dancing for um and yeah just really yeah. in love yeah. getting to to share that's art so cool. with with everyone so. yeah that's awesome yeah. i love it cool so <laughs> yeah. we're about to get to this piece and the title of this piece in a moment but right before that we got one last little thing before we jump into it okay okay how do you know all my homies so yeah, tell me how you know yes. how you know rebecca how you know elijah <laughs> how you know sarah like, yeah. Me, yeah it's honestly yeah. kind of a crazy story mm-hmm. Um, so I got hired at a company here in Chicago Uh and my husband and I decided to move out two weeks early to just, um, find a church to get connected with and to just, um, see the city and basically just to get settled before I started Mm -hmm. work. Um, and so I had been listening to a podcast for second city church, Mm -hmm. um, just listening while we were, yeah, just a sermon, their sermon, sermon basically. Yeah. So So I was just listening to that, like getting a feel for like theology and things Mm -hmm. like that. And so we moved here on a Friday and Mm -hmm. I was like, Sunday, I want to go check out this church. Um, and so I went to the church and as I was walking in, um, I was just explaining, like Mm -hmm. a greeter came to me and was like, hi, what's your name? Um, and I was just explaining my name's Faith. I'm a dancer. And then behind me, I hear someone like yell my name, like you're Faith, you're (laughs) dancing with such and such. And I was like, how do you know me? And, uh, He was like, my name's Elijah. We're going to be in the same dance company. And so come to find out, uh, 
a colleague of mine who's in the same company happened to be Elijah, who's yeah. at Second City Church. That's it. That's um, so yeah, it. he's yeah. also a coworker and mm-hmm. was at the church, and I met him wow. at church. Um, and then shortly after that, I met Sarah Baker mm-hmm. um, at like a community yeah. day, wow. uh, like church small group. And she, the first thing she said to me was like, "Tell me your story." Yeah. And then yeah. you just that's, unlock. That sounds so much like Sarah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. Wow. So just like wanted to hear my whole life story. Wow. Um, and then shortly after that, I met Rebecca, mm-hmm. and she was actually starting, mm-hmm. uh, or in the process of sat in a boat, yeah. um, and actually encouraged me to apply for the grant that I got for mm-hmm. this piece. Yeah. So has walked with me through mm-hmm. that like application process so as well. Man, so all three t- of them t- have just Jesus, been, yeah, been yeah, it. have been really great. Like yeah. honestly, my first friends moving yeah. to Chicago mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I haven't been around so many like Christian dance professionals. Yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes <laughs> on accident, can, it feels like. Right. And sometimes you can feel like, yeah. like, are they even out there? Yeah. You know, the ones who are both serious in their craft yeah. and serious about their faith. Yeah. Because a lot of people can just be more focused on one or the other, but to just find this community of people who are like, yo, we're doing this for the Lord, which yes. is why we bring that extra level of excellence. So good. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, wow. I love it. And, and um, you know, we went to go see Sat in a Boat. And uh, I think it was a Saturday show, like a Friday or Saturday or something. Gabby and I, we went and we're there. We're like, man, yo, this has to be shown to more people. Mm -hmm. Like, we got to get this going again because we were thinking about family members and friends who really needed to see this show, you know? So with that, uh, we reached out to him and said, yo, can we do this again? And we did, because we used to do Creative Encounter as live in-person events. Mm -hmm. And our last one that we did in person was a Sat in a Boat performance in December of uh, 2022. That was the last time uh, we did in person and they were there and performed. It was just amazing, you know? Yo, what's going on, y'all? The day is finally here. The day that we shoot lyrics, song, official music video, and you are invited to be an extra for this event. Remember, the event is going to be this Saturday, June 1st at Wentz Concert Hall, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. You don't want to be late. We are starting sharp at 5 p.m., so make sure you arrive around 4.30 p.m. so you can go ahead and get your seats. Make sure you're dressed formally. Remember, I've been sending emails telling y'all, we need you to dress nice. We're going to be at a concert hall, y'all. We want this to be dope. So it's going to be a great time make sure you're an extra kids are invited there'll be like snacks we'll have merch we'll be hanging out and kicking it it's going to be a great time so again Wentz concert hall in naperville this saturday june 1st and the tickets are free so go ahead and get your tickets the link is in the description below back to the video so that kind of segues into yours mm-hmm. As, from what i've seen it's going to be this weekend y'all <laughs> yeah. but just from the title and and the description stuff i've read on instagram i'm like this right here sounds like another like you know banger right here yeah you know? so the name yeah. of this one is her <laughs> yes right so her. this is called her mm-hmm. and i just kind of want you to go into explaining yeah. it yeah you know? go yeah. for it um, so I feel like her really mm-hmm. was birthed in like 2019. Mm-hmm. I was still at Oral Roberts University, mm-hmm. which was my senior year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, I had we all had a senior project or senior paper we could choose to do. Mm-hmm. So obviously I decided to do the project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so my project was creating a dance piece mm-hmm. um, that would be like 20 to 30 minutes mm-hmm. about my testimony. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. I basically just started the process of casting people at my school Mm -hmm. um, and choreographing this piece about my testimony, Mm -hmm. um, which is when I was in the ninth grade Mm -hmm. or eighth grade or so, I started like really developing um, just like a sense of needing control and Mm -hmm. like uh, some like perfection, perfection. I can't even say it. Perfectionistic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Perfectionistic, like, tendencies. um, And that kind of led into me, like, subconsciously developing an eating disorder. Mm. Um, And even though, like, because at the time I was an athlete, I was just trying to eat better, exercise Mm. more. It just became more and more restrictive and more and more obsessive. uh, I was doing volleyball. Volleyball? Yeah, volleyball. yeah. Yeah. So, eighth grade year, I was, like, kind of just trying to make... Uh, varsity Mm -hmm. at my uh, high school and so I was just like let's like fine tune things Mm -hmm. and really uh, increase my exercise Mm -hmm. and my um, eating habits just make it more clean Mm -hmm. and then yeah it just turned into uh, extremely uh, Mm -hmm. restrictive eating disorder and so 
uh, I kind of went through a season of Mm -hmm. um, just extreme loneliness and depression Mm -hmm. uh, where I just became more isolated Mm -hmm. with this eating disorder. Um, And my family at first didn't really know what Mm -hmm. was going on um, because I was kind of in that transition age where you grow really tall really very quickly yeah. and like you kind of shed your baby fat right. a little bit yeah. so you can't really so you, tell you so, yeah. someone's changing because mm-hmm. they're changing so much yeah. um but that was kind of the time where my eating disorder was getting um even stronger mm-hmm. and so yeah my mom one morning just woke up and was like i felt like i should research anorexia and mm. She confronted me with the symptoms, yeah. and I had every single one of the symptoms, mm-hmm. um, but immediately was, like, in denial mm-hmm. and uh, was like, I can't have a problem. Like, mm-hmm. no, I don't have a mental illness, mm-hmm. and I was in that denial phase mm-hmm. for a bit. Yeah. Um, but she kept pushing through, and I started going to counseling. Mm-hmm. Um, I started getting a nutritionist, yeah. and I honestly just kind of doubled down, and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not changing. Like, this mm-hmm. is, I finally feel like I'm strong. I finally feel like I'm in my, like, dream body. Prime, yeah. um, like, I finally felt like this was the identity mm-hmm. I always wanted yeah. um, because I felt like in my younger years mm-hmm. I was bullied, and mm-hmm. I didn't feel attractive or, mm-hmm. like, popular. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like I had, like, a boring personality or, mm-hmm. I was always like the odd person out of yeah. things and I felt like now I was getting attention mm-hmm. I was a starter on the team mm-hmm. um and so it felt like my life was like s- tied to the success of yeah. my thinness mm-hmm. or changing my body yeah. um and so it was just very dark mm-hmm. a very dark season yeah. and then a woman at my church actually had a dream about me mm. um and in the dream I was just crying out for help and wow. she basically invited me over her house and ended up sharing with me that she used to have an eating disorder Mm. when she was uh, in her 20s. And um, basically that the Lord loved me and wanted to like take me out of that. And I kind of had a a divine encounter with her Mm. like right there and with the Lord and like felt his love and just felt the strength to um, not cater to those thoughts mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say it was like instantaneous mm-hmm. healing, but I felt a change, yeah. like in a, a very visceral change, mm-hmm. um, sp- specifically in my mind of yeah, sure. just not giving them the thought, the power to the thoughts yes, anymore. Wow. Um, so yeah, this piece was kind of wow. like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, birth out of wanting to share yeah. that story with other yeah. people. Um, I realize a lot of dancers have very similar stories. Mm-hmm. A lot of athletes, lot of athletes have very yeah. similar stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and thankfully I came out of my eating disorder yeah, yes. alive. I genuinely yeah. feel like if I had stayed in it for mm-hmm. another year or so, mm-hmm. I would have had much worse, much worse health implications. Mm-hmm. And, um, honestly, I might not even be here. Mm-hmm. So the Lord, like I had to yeah. just declare <laughs> yeah. this story and um, share this story. So wow. yeah, uh, that's kind of the inspiration for her wow. is just retelling exactly what I just said, like yeah. start to finish, mm-hmm. but in a more abstract, contemporary, dance-inspired mm-hmm. way. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, praise God. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane how God uses everything for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Mm-hmm. So even those bad seasons, um, those those uh, tragic seasons and different things we go through, he used that as a launching pad to send you into like your destiny and your calling. You yeah. know? So nothing, like the word says, nothing is in vain. All of it is tied together, you know? Yeah. So you're going through that season is now an encouragement to others. Yeah. Um, it helped you to produce creativity. Um, and it was so cool because the, your teacher's like, yo, you guys have to do, you want to do a project or whatever? Mm-hmm. You did a project and it, it was able to connect with that. Because that's yeah. essentially when you kind of wrote it. Uh, yeah. You were kind of coming out of it at that yes. time prior to, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in 2020 was when I like started mm-hmm. developing the choreography. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the pandemic happened and mm-hmm. I didn't get to finish the piece. Oh, that, okay. So, so did you ever perform it for no, the No, we never school? performed wow. it. Basically, we it was about 50% done. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I didn't get to finish it. And so I was like, okay, God, I felt like you were supposed, I was yeah. supposed to do this yeah. and I will pray for another opportunity. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What made you, now this is 2020. Yeah. It's 2024 now. Is this your first time performing it? Yes. Okay. This is the so premiere. what made you yeah. hold on to, hold on to that vision? That yeah. Moment? Why didn't you just be like, ah, oh, you know, forget this? Yeah. I feel like 
it was something where I was like, if I'm ever around dancers that mm -hmm. I feel like could do this piece, I got to just like embrace it and do mm -hmm. it. Um, and I honestly was kind of accepting the thought to like, it might be a decade until I get mm -hmm. to do this. Um, and so I just felt after Which talking, you knew you wanted to. I knew I wanted yeah. to in some way, mm -hmm. um, or even if it wasn't the full piece that I had in mind, mm -hmm. some type of like iteration or like mm -hmm. modification of mm -hmm. the work I felt eventually would be produced. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I just kind of felt like I should hold on to yeah. it. And it was actually talking to Rebecca mm -hmm. after seeing Sat in a Boat yeah. that she encouraged me to apply, or she told me about the grant that yeah. she received mm -hmm. to do Sat in a Boat yeah. and encouraged me to apply and mm -hmm. was like, like, do you have a project? Yeah. Just, you know, do you have something you could write about? Yeah. And honestly, because the pandemic happened, I had an entire paper describing in detail what the project would be mm -hmm. and was basically almost grant ready. Yeah. Um, and so, so after hearing about the grant and catering it to just like the audience in Chicago, because mm -hmm. that's another thing I've been thinking about is it was supposed to be for christian college students mm -hmm. in oklahoma and now it's for yeah. <laughs> the public of chicago yeah. and so it's a very different audience yeah, now um so yeah i got the grant uh last year mm -hmm. and then we've been rehearsing and getting the piece ready up until this weekend yeah, so, so yeah Man, this yeah. is exciting it's so many themes so many biblical themes just happening here as you're talking yeah. so many because i'm thinking about all throughout scripture whenever god called someone to something he had to he took them away from something. Mm -hmm. He always like, okay, just Adam and Eve, you know, this had just says like, this is why, you know, a man leaves his, his uh, mother and father to be joined to his wife or whatever. There's mm -hmm. always this, you have to leave something to move into your next season. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with Abraham, uh, yeah. just the disciples, anything that you see in scripture, right? So with that, he shifted you all the way from over here, you know, what was it, uh, Tulsa? Yeah. All the way from over here, and they all in Chicago, because yeah. he had this vision. He's like, okay, I'm going to plant you you know you need these specific individuals to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And he planted you over here specifically. So he always does a shift. Yeah. You know, we have to be in position to allow him to move in such a way mm -hmm. uh, so that the multitudes can be blessed from it, you know? Yes, so definitely. This, this is just so yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be so it's good. Been, it's been a huge blessing. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing that's been exciting mm -hmm. is as I've been taking classes around the city and talking to different dancers and mm -hmm. hearing that so many um, people have this story. Mm -hmm. It just seems so relevant for mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm excited for, I think, the Chicago dance community specifically yeah. to just see um, another artwork mm -hmm. that is tied to just, like, someone's story yeah. and um, wrestling with their faith, but also coming out of it and mm -hmm. having just, like, a beautiful story to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, yeah, an exciting, yeah. Yeah. exciting experience. Is. So, so, yeah. Good. I love it. Great. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, uh, tell people how they can, you know, sign up for this event. You know, it's going to be in a few days, guys. Yes. So we want you guys to be there. So, tell people, yeah. people how they can sign up and where to go. Yeah. Um, so, you can actually go to my Instagram at Faith Vaughn. Mm -hmm. And it, the link in my bio, I have the tickets that you can purchase. Mm -hmm. They are going pretty quickly now. Right. So, well, I, I recommend you. doing that uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, it'll actually be in Lincoln Park okay. in Chicago cool. at mm -hmm. the Menominee Club. Okay. If, uh, it's a very popular, like, sports yeah. area. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, Saturday, Saturday night at 7.30 yeah. and then Sunday night at 4 p.m. Awesome. So, so, Saturday, June 1st. June 1st. And yeah. Sunday, June 2nd. Okay. So, it's yeah. going to be great. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, so, we always wrap up every episode uh, sharing... Uh, just something that you can give the individuals to kind of spur them on in their faith and in their creativity. Like what's a word of encouragement, motivation, uh, an insight of some sort, something that you can give to the creative that's watching and listening. Yeah. Um, I honestly feel like as a creative, it's mm -hmm. a lot of waiting and mm -hmm. it's a lot of time, like in the secret place, mm -hmm. both with the Lord, but also just you uh, on your own mm -hmm. kind of like developing your craft mm -hmm. and just working really hard towards what the Lord's called you to do. Mm -hmm. And so I just encourage you that most 90% of the time will be those like waiting seasons, mm -hmm. but it'll just really prepare you for that 10% mm -hmm. um, where you'll finally get to share that with people yeah. or you'll finally get to just express what the Lord's given you in mm -hmm. the best way yeah. possible and that he'll always meet you. He'll mm -hmm. meet you there. Yeah. Even if it feels like it's not going to come through, like that's mm -hmm. been my experience is his timing is perfect and 
trust the waiting season. <laughs> mm, amen. Yeah. Trust the waiting yeah. season. That's so good. Yeah. Uh, you just reminded me of, I'm kind of surveying through Genesis again. Cause just, if you just sit in Genesis, it's so good. It's mm-hmm. so good. But yeah. I'm surveying through that and I'm seeing Joseph's story. How each time there was a situation, it was a couple times where it popped up and said, but the Lord was with Joseph. Mm-hmm. But the Lord was with Joseph. And then when he told the two guys who were in jail, he's like, yo, He's like, pretty much, you're going to die. <laughs> you're going to live. Yeah. But the one who's going to live, yeah. please don't forget about yes. me, okay? Yeah. And it said two years passed. He forgot about him. Then it popped up. And he's like, oh, Joseph, whatever. But even with that, he was in this whole waiting season. Yeah. Locked up for something he didn't even do. But the Lord was preparing him mm-hmm. and had him to end up being second in command over Egypt. You know? Yeah. So even in that season where it just feels like things aren't flowing or whatever, God is ever present. The Lord yeah. is with you, like He was mm-hmm. with Joseph and everyone else in Scripture. Yeah, you know, so that's so encouraging. Yeah, it yeah. is encouraging. Hey, man, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Cool. So, how can people reach you? Oh, you can't already yeah, tell yeah. me how to yeah. reach you. Instagram, yeah, at Instagram. Faith Vaughn. <laughs> Faith Vaughn, perfect. Yes. So, Faith yeah. Vaughn on Instagram, and right yeah. there in her bio, yeah. you will see the link for the show for this weekend. Yeah. Okay, y'all. Man, this is so good. Yes, awesome. it was. It's yeah. so great. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning into another Creative Encounter podcast episode. Remember, we are a nonprofit through ACT International, so you support this ministry. It is tax deductible, and Creative Encounter is tied to Juet Z Pay Music, my music ministry as a recording artist. So, all of the proceeds support us creating new music, new episodes, reaching the uh, uh, the, the world through creativity and the kingdom. So, go ahead and become a monthly financial partner. I'd absolutely love that and appreciate your support. Thank you so much again, Faith, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. And we'll see you guys next time for episode 78. Bye.